Hi, Christine Marie here. Very excited to help you learn how you can help create a workforce and workplace of wellness. It all starts with you. And these tips are only for the individual and especially the individual who menstruates. Number one, honor your energy. That's right, however your energy is showing up, honor it. Do not override or self-sacrifice because what you create is resentment and the resentment and the feeling of it pervades all that you do. So you wonder, why is everybody so mean to me today? Because you're being mean to yourself. Honor where you are. When your energy is high, enjoy it. When it's low, take care of yourself. Learning about your menstrual phases will help you get a handle on where your energy is and why it's there, which will make it easier to honor. But until you're there, you can make incremental changes by just being here now, Ram Das, being where you are. Honor your energy and that will make it easier for you to do what you need to do at work and it will help others learn to honor theirs. Number two, boundaries. This is very similar to honoring our energy, except that when we're dealing with boundaries, we are being the difference. Good fences make good neighbors. But instead of, it's not good fences make good neighbors if the neighbor yells and screams, this is my fence, this is my fence. It's the being of the boundary. If you become aware that there is something in the workplace that is not serving you, no longer serve it. This way, you diminish the energy that it might have over you of like being that annoying thing. But you also, by paying less attention to it and paying more attention to what you want in your workplace, that thing that you want, it will grow. Just think about how it feels when, when you see somebody across the room and they see you. And it's not a, ooh, you're sexy or something like that. I'm just talking about when you shine and someone else sees you shining. That happens between people, between things. So honor that energy and be the boundary that you want to see in your workplace. Number three, personal agency. Operate from a place of personal agency. What this means is that you are doing for you as best you can. This means seeking validation from within. How does this feel? Is this serving me? You might think, how is this going to serve the workplace? Well, when you realize that there is something that is not in alignment with you, other people might also be having that experience. Your customers might also be having that experience. The same hinky-do that you're stuck on might also be a problem that is surfacing in a different way on the other side of the client, excuse me, of the business customer relationship. So practice personal agency, speak up. You might be doing yourself and the business a huge solid. When we speak up, we also empower others to do the same. And when we have a culture of people speaking up, the culture will benefit. If this is outside of your personality type, that's perfectly fine. Most businesses have someone who can act as an intermediary, or this might be a wonderful opportunity for growth, for intrapersonal growth. It might open up a new path for you and a new channel of awareness in your business. Number four, stay on your side of the street. This is an adage that is borrowed from the recovery rooms, for those of you who are familiar with them, or for those of you who heard it and said, hey, I've heard this one before. Yes, you have. Stay on your side of the street. That means that we take care of ourselves, personal agency. We are the boundary, boundaries, but we're not telling other people what to do and how to do it because we don't need to. We are 
okay in our world. If there is a problem that is someone else's issue, and we know it is, and we want to tell them about themselves, we let and trust and allow life to do it for them. Do we have to tolerate it? No. But we handle it always from our side of the street. An easy way to think about it is one finger points out, three point back. So more often, the thing that you're seeing that is a problem that someone else needs to remedy, three fingers point back, it might be your problem. When we stay on our side of the street, we offer ourselves the opportunity to grow from the issue that we're seeing them have a problem with. And hey, if it's really not our problem, to model it. Because if we're aware of it, here's another phrase from the rooms, you spot it, you got it. So even if you aren't aware that you have the problem, we kind of can't see the problem unless we have it. So be the change that you wish to see. Very similar to boundaries. And then number five, practice fierce gentleness. Fierce gentleness means being fiercely gentle with yourself first. This does not mean oh, I get to be extra nice to everybody. I get to be a doormat, yay. No, fierce gentleness actually means asking yourself those questions that I mentioned earlier. How does this feel? Will I benefit from this? Will others benefit from this at my detriment? When we are operating from fierce gentleness, we are operating from the idea that something that is honoring us is actually for the greatest good of all concerned. I'll give you the example of fixing somebody else's mistake by, let's say, staying late for work and missing out on the restorative time that you need between work ending and work beginning the next day. When you stayed late and fixed their problem, number one, they will expect you to fix it again for them next time. You will resent them for that expectation. You will resent yourself for once again cleaning up after somebody else. And they don't get to benefit from the consequences of not doing what they were supposed to do. You might counter with, yeah, but we're a team. I'm taking one for the team. Consider how often you might be doing that. Fierce gentleness is being gentle with yourself to, stay, to say, hey, I need this time. I may not think that I need it now, but if I want to have sustained energy for the next few days, I need to give myself this time for restoration. I need to give myself this space for my yoga or dinner or time with my family. The world benefits when you put your needs first. The business benefits when you are putting your needs first so that that small time when that team member didn't do their work, that small task, that one incident, they can see, the business can see that there's a pathology there. Or that person can realize, whoa, I messed up. I don't want to do this again. When you practice fierce gentleness with yourself, like every other tip I've given, it models positive, well-being-ness, well-being behavior for your community, for the culture of your work community. So I leave you with this, these five ways to be a fantastic asset to your workplace. All five ways depend on you showing up for you so that your business can show up in the best way possible. Whether you're a solopreneur or an employee, everyone benefits when you are of greatest service to yourself because in so doing, you are of greatest service to the world. Thank you. I wish you joy, ease, space, and grace.